You're watching Weekend at Gabe's and I'm Weekend Gabe. This latest episode was brought to you by the good folks over at the Ghetto Flower. Use our code WATG for an exclusive 15% discount when visiting their site. Tell them I sent you. Now enjoy the show. All right, tonight's a really fun night. We're doing a little bit of sports, and then we're going to do Gabe Plays to wrap us up at the top of the hour. Uh, but first, friend of the show, NBC Sports Chicago Under the Center podcast, and also he does. he's also the father of the year, Ken Davis, joining us here on Weekend at Games. How are you, man? What's going on, Gabe? What's going on, Sam? How are you guys doing? What's going on, man? Good, Good to man. have you back. Good to, Good see, to see you, by the way. You. Look, look at man. You, Look, you, you still look great. I, we compared this episode, what we saw you last year, and I'm almost certain that no change has occurred. Yeah, zero change. It looks the same. I'm pretty sure the background is the same. I no, love it. Yep. Uh, I need to <laughs> step up the health regimen, uh, but I, I'm beginning to step up. So, yeah, probably the same. Probably, probably <laughs> the same. But I must say, that Spock in the background. Sam, He's creepy. He's creepy. No, oh, no, no, like no, no. Chef's kiss. Hey. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Yes. It's I love just it. Just on point. It's just Listen, expanse. But he doesn't, everything he doesn't about have it. he doesn't have water though. So. Oh, okay. Fair enough, Gabe. Fair enough. Oh, man. so this is the type of game you guys are playing. Real <laughs> quick, speaking of, so look, so look, so Sunday, right? Unfortunately, yeah. we all know Bill Russell passed, right? Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm like, man, because I love Bill Russell, right? So I'm like, man, I'm about to get me some memorabilia. I'm about to get a jersey. So I I, I found this Mitchell and Ness for like 150. I'm like, F it. I'm going for this, right? I cop it. And I'm thinking, like, damn, nobody's bought this. I did this like within 10 minutes of it, not breaking all the way where all the media outlets have done it. Yeah. So I did it and it was like on Poshmark or something. And I'm like, and then it was like, it sold out. So I'm like, wait, but it said it took my money. You're saying it sold out for me. Then the day it hits me and it's like, yes. And I know it wasn't sold out. The per- I'm, I'm telling you, he's, when he realized what happened Sunday, because I did it before he realized. Yeah, he was he like, no, nah, not that 150. Like, I'm not selling for 150 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn. He's like, yeah, yeah. man. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, I apologize. I apologize. Listen, but yeah, man, let's let's dive into a little bit of football man, right, with the Bears and with the National Football League. I know you right. got a lot. Oh, yeah, man. so let's start off with uh, all the everything that's happening sort of around the league. We're going to start there real quick before we get into the Bears stuff. Uh, Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson hit with a six game suspension for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy with the accusations mm-hmm. of sexual misconduct. Uh, so Thursday. Keep the union the number of accusations because it's truly impressive. You it's, know, like it's 24, 26. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say it was upwards of 25, but that sounds about right. That's that's yeah. too many massages for any one man to have. And I gotta it's say terrible. That. It's no. terrible. I mean, it's 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 sickening for me personally. It it sounds enough to where you can believe the ladies more than you can believe him, in my opinion. Absolutely. So, so it looks like the union is going to stay put and not appeal it, and they're encouraging the league to also do the same. So they have until Thursday to uh, submit an appeal for more games. Uh, first off, do you think six games is suffice? Uh, yeah. I think that it should have been a full year uh, at I was least. Full year. I was full year. Worst case scenario, I'm saying worst case for anyone who believes that, that the ladies are telling the truth. Half the season would have been. I think you could have had a, met in the medium of half the season where he didn't play last year, but he got paid. So, right. like, you you really, it's not punishment. I mean, it's punishment mm-hmm. they took football away from you, but you got paid. And then yeah. this contract is set up to where you missing these games don't hurt you. You still get all of your money, right? So, I think like he, I think like his base salary is like a million dollars this year. So he's not getting paid game check to game check. Right. So like, no, he should have for the league to do what they needed to do. He should have. He, I said the whole year, it should have been a, it should have been eight to nine games, at least depending on however many games they pay, play this year, as far as the Browns, if they play 17 to 16, but it could have at worst been that um, it's too, it's too much. Like, let's like, like who, who, uh, let's be honest, who's really out here caping for Deshaun, Watson. I haven't heard about like. Let me hold on, hold on. Let me tell you. you <laughs> let me tell saying? you the like, strong side of the story. Right now, yeah, now initially, no, initially that. last year when he he tried, he he said he wanted to be traded, and this kind of came up. 
then it, it was just still some, some you could have some doubt like ownership because let's be honest ownership had to know like if he's running around doing all this like all these teams have uh cops fbi like they like they had they they know your your inner desires if you're out there committing these things these sure. teams with their connections right sure so that was the initially it was like oh wait they're trying to say but then it's like 25 like what no 24 and he settled 23 i believe as of today yeah um no nah, dude like you clearly got a kink that's you're assaulting people with you know what i'm saying so i think a whole year was what i wanted and it would have been fine i think the league and I, I, this is the one thing that gets me to the league like yeah we wanted to get you did you Roger, like, you know <laughs> of course, like, of course, like, I'm gonna say it knowing that's not what you're gonna get to save face for myself. But right. if you really think he should have gotten a year, add some more games to it, you know, right. like, add, add more games. If the union's doing what the union's supposed to do, that's why you have a union, you know what I'm saying? Good or bad, that's why you have a union. But as far as the league, you know, and you could say, well, this isn't Ray Rice because let's not forget, Ray Rice had like two games until we saw the footage. It's enough, there's enough class action lawsuits or what i mean or civil suits rather to yeah. say that you know this is a bit much when we're talking about you know what i'm saying as far as your conduct being detrimental to the league so like i thought a whole year was the same for me gabe but i would have i wouldn't have been happy but to me it wouldn't have been bad it's like damn y'all don't care it still has that right. feeling of do you really care with it just being six games? I mean, there's only like a, a two teams on there that could that should beat them in those two those first six games too. Yeah. Facts. I I totally agree with you, and I, I I think the eight games makes a lot of sense. My argument to Gabe this morning was he didn't play last year, but you bring up a great point was that he got paid last year, so who the fuck cares? Um, I want to I want to flip the other side of the coin because while we're talking about the integrity of the league here, uh. The Dolphins suspension that was levied today, uh, which was, <laughs> and I quote, violating the integrity of the league, to which I ask, what integrity? Uh, but they gave up a 20, 2023 first round pick, a 2024 third round pick. The owner was suspended, I believe, for until October 17th, which when you Means think about nothing. games is like Means roughly absolutely. the same as Deshaun, a little less. Okay. Uh, and find. Um, uh, yeah. This is some premium bullshit. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, the, this is what we come to find out. This is what they got dinged for. The fact that just like um, uh, Brian Flores said, Tom Brady, all right, because remember, we all were thinking, well, who's the quarterback that they're talking about, right? We didn't necessarily know. Who was the quarterback, right? Then, because we, we thought it was Deshaun Watson when yeah. it first came out. It was like, who's the quarterback that the owner, Stephen Ross, wanted Brian Flores to come on the yacht with? And then later on, we found out it was Tom Brady with an inch with an option for ownership, a minority mm. ownership, which is again, I find interesting because Jordan had to give up ownership to play for the Wizards, right? So, like, are you telling me in the league? Because which is you can't in the NFL because Patrick Mahomes should have got it. Kansas City, if you can get that and in the league or whatever. So I wonder still Brady would have to give it up or wink, wink, and give up to where he would get it back. So then we find out that. Then we also find out they were tinkering with Sean Payton, former coach of the New Orleans Saints. Right? This is what this is where it gets good. This is where the <laughs> premium NFL bullshit really kicks in. So, but they couldn't prove to Brian Flores that anybody necessarily overheard right. or believed that he would be paid a hundred thousand dollars for tanking for Tua. Right. So what? Well, so everything else that Brian Flores said was true, right? Like that's what you like. That's what you're saying. Like, hey, yeah, you was the... on point with, with A and B, but C, and we know because C, the team would have had to have been taken away from Stephen Ross, and they never necessarily want to set that precedent. Because let's be, well, listen, Daniel Snyder should not have a football team, right? Absolutely. No. Fuck no. It's no. not even no, right, but they keep making reasons to cover. And let's be honest. It's the Donald Sterling situation, which Mark Cuban kind of touched. It's a fear. Once they start coming down and snatching teams, man, they may come get my team, right? Right. Stephen Ross, they, he should have been punished by – no, he was tanking. Let's let's stop. Well, all of us are grown-ups here. 
right? <laughs> you, you told your – like everything – so Brian Flores is now making up lies, but everything else was true? No, you told him, and we know you wanted to, right? You told him what you wanted to do. You wanted to mess up his program by setting the president where they're not even going to try. And then you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. But the league always, because the owners were in the league, Roger Goodell works for them, covered for you instead of telling us the utter truth that stuff like this basically happens. To me, that, that first of all, he's an owner. What does he do? So right. suspending him till October. <laughs> like, what's he, he's not running. <laughs> You know, he's not doing up and downs. He's like, what? what is it that he does? Like, he, he, like, even if you suspend him for the year, he still owns the damn team. Like, he's still <laughs> making – like, when you're suspending him, are you it's taking free vacation. money? It's free right, vacation, you're not, taking, right? like, you're not taking the TV contract away from – like, how are you really punishing – oh, you can't go in the office? We yeah. all tell him what's You can't go on the premises. That right, That's your punishment. Like, uh, Till October, right? Like, yeah. October, <laughs> yeah. but the, what do you think? Uh, really quick before we move on to the Bears, but re- what do you think? Uh, because I think the part, the most important part, was the um, that they didn't find evidence of the team intentionally losing games. But do you think that this is going to the other stuff is still going to hold water with Brian Flores's ongoing? Uh, lawsuit against the league right now. Do you think that this is going to be this is good for him? Yeah, in a way, I think it'd be good because who's ever litigating on his side should be able to say there's been validity with the things that he's been saying. You know what I'm saying? And also point like, it, it, like, why are you being hired if you can't point out the league is covering its own ass in this situation? But they basically came out and said, yo, everything else he said was facts, right? <laughs> so it's like. That's what they just said. Everything yeah. he said was because basically, look, we wouldn't know this. The only reason we know this is because it was in his class action law. This is the only reason we know this, right? So everything else he said is facts, but yet he's lying about this. So I feel like this doesn't, I think if this is your question, Gabe, I don't think this hampers his situation. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's, some of it's been proven, been proven truth. So I think that it, it should help him clearly more than hurt him. Though, but the only problem I think now that they'll try to say is, you know, um, how are you hurting? It, it could try to try to hurt you as far as hurting black coaches because sure. he was saying that, you know, black coaches don't get as many opportunities or whatever. But he's still proven the lack of control that black coaches have in some situations yeah. to where you have somebody coming in here. Like, I mean, like just the, the coaching situation with Sean Payton, the Tom Brady situation with tampering. Like you're putting me in a situation. Think about it. If he got on that, if he got on that yacht. His ass would be in trouble, right? Like, you didn't care about his future or whatever. You was worried about doing what you thought, turning up how you want to turn up. So, like, that's that's my only issue. I mean, that's how I feel about it, Gabe. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, all right, quickly but, transitioning to the Bears. And before we get into the, the many plethora of, of topics going on with the Bears, uh, who just put on pads today in training camp, uh, I want to talk about the, the stadiums. Because uh, we, we just saw the, the proposal from the city to slap a dome on top of Soldier Field, which solves almost nothing. Uh, huh? <laughs> but uh, versus this new plan uh, at the Arlington Heights racetrack to build a monster stadium a la L.A., a la Atlanta, um, all, a la Jerry World, uh, if you want to go Vegas. that far back, Vegas. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on first off the soldier field dome and then, uh, the future of the bears home? Is it going to be in Chicago or is it going to be in Arlington? It's going to be in Arlington. <laughs> um, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, listen, I've grown up with the bears playing the entirety of my life right off the Lakeshore drive where I live on the east side, so Lister Drive is one of my main roads that I enjoy riding because I can get downtown in seven minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I love Lakeshore Drive. I always try not to move away from it because at least depending on work and whatever you got to do is tranquility, just driving or whatever, right? Um, I'll miss them, but I've always said if I owned the Bears, I would have owned Soldier Field a hell of a long time ago. Um, there's no way I'm sitting here in the city owns what like I'm dude, I'm a I'm a big boy, I'm a big boy team. All right. You're gonna I'll pay you, but but I would have put the I would have put my foot on the city's necks years ago, like we're leaving. 
Let's start talking about something. I'll give you 10 to 15 percent. You know what I'm saying? And we'll figure out how over the length of this when that dwindles down or whatever. Uh, but I would have been on. So, but the problem bears were being cheap and didn't want to have to pay for stuff either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, the, we're still paying for the damn the uh, toilet bowl in the dang Coliseum. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, for me, I would have I would have done this a long time. I would have forced the city to do something like this a long time ago if I was the Bears. Because what, what, what options did the city really have? They didn't want to lose the Bears. You know what I'm saying? I'm really, like, think about, I mean, Brewer, think about this. 30 years ago. Downtown Before was a downtown. <laughs> right, okay, downtown, downtown wasn't the downtown that it is today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you you could have pressed them like we're bringing we're generating at least eight eight weekends or at least eight days throughout the year where you, the hotels, the restaurants, all these are increasing. Let alone it's increasing during increment months where the weather sucks. Right. Yeah. We got we got to do something. Right. Like right. you could have this this should have happened a long time ago, but. Going to Arlington, look, I don't want the Bears to move all the way out there, but if I can have Bears land, with <laughs> hotels and casino, and I can do all these other things on all this acreage and just own it, it just makes too much sense. Like, why wouldn't you do it? You know what I'm saying? And we're to the point where Bears fans don't really care. I feel like if this was 20 years ago, people would have their arms up in the air, but Bears fans don't really care. And to be honest with you, they shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? This isn't, they shouldn't care about it, especially if we don't have to pay for the tax. Because I'll be dead. If I'm a, if I'm a, yeah, I ain't putting no fucking tax dollars on that dome. I swear to God. No. Right. I'm with you, but you would have. But I'm a six. I'm like, but that's, that's the thing. Like, you have to do what's best for you. I mean, if the Bears are worth three to four billion dollars without owning a stadium, that's that's five to six easy with owning this, and it's probably more than that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? With owning this, so why wouldn't I do that? And keep people don't understand how many McCaskies there are, and this is their cash cow. They don't own Home Depot on the side or something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, this, they don't have some other business where it's like, yeah, we're billionaires because we own so and so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, they they the Bears are what generates their their the most of their money. Yeah, I, I, there is the other angle here, and I don't know if you were about to say this weekend, Gabe, but it is Soldier Field, right? I, it is a monument to the soldiers, which is, and especially in, a, in an arena like the NFL, who rolls out the god awful camo fits every, uh, what is that, September or, or November or whatever it is. The salute uh, our soldiers. Yeah, the salute our soldiers thing. They also do the grandstanding with the. You know, daddy is daddy is here. Run to dad. Um, what what is what is the future of Soldier Fit Field? Because you realistically, can you demolish it? Probably oh, no. not. Oh, no. they're not going to demolish. I mean, one, it's it, it it gives you too many options, and then you could always have the threat, even though the Bears have to okay it of bringing the AFC team in. You're gonna have like skeet shooting and like old school luge. All that old, like, wild world of sports stuff that used to take place in a place, like, it's going to come back. I mean, they're going to have concerts there. Um, They're probably going to look for some, I mean, some other, I won't say a, a football team, and you already have the fire, but try to look for some other outdoor activity, you know what I'm saying, to, to come in there and do something. But, I mean, it's going to be a concert venue for the most part. That's what yeah. I would basically say. That's what they're going to probably try to run through there from the majority of the summertime and springtime is that have concerts. Maybe they'll put a festival up in there or something, but it's going to be something to that degree what Soldier Field is going to be until they can try to figure out something. But, I mean, the Bears Bears can tell them they can't have another football team. They should try, but why, why would I, if I own a football team and I'm a billionaire, come to – I mean, you have to sell me Soldier Field, yeah. and I still don't have the area around there that the Bears are seeking. Even though Chicago is a wonderful place, I mean, you can have two football teams in Chicago, and that's only 16 – to 17, 18 days where they actually be here. You know what I'm saying? It's so you could still do it, but I mean it's gonna be sad. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's gonna be it's gonna be gonna sad, be sad business. Yeah. All right. L last thought on this. Uh more Mayor Lori Lightfoot uh, said that the Bears fans won't go for traveling to Arlington Heights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a long story. I mean, first of all. 
you shouldn't be talking about stuff that you're probably not going to be around and necessarily do anything about in the first place. Talk right, that so talk. It's good, it's talk it's good that you talk. Got that, it's good you got that Lola deal, that Lola Palooza deal done, because you're not going to see never another part of that 10 year contract that you just signed with Perry for Hair for Real or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, like, dude, are you crazy? I mean, especially if they put hotels out there. And they let you at the amenities and do it. You're, you're saying that people won't come out there. They don't even have to come. Of course, if you're so, if you're a season ticket holder, that's eight to nine games. But let's just say you just go to Bears games. You just go to three, right? Like clearly, they'll go out there and kick it and do whatever. Dog, do people? I don't think sometimes, and I think people don't understand how obsessed Bears fans are. And that's one thing I can say since working at NBC has really changed. Some of the places around the world that I've talked to people just because of the Bears, Bears <laughs> dude, it's crazy. They don't, and the thing, I mean, they don't care. So yeah, people they played at Wrigley before that before the late seventies. <laughs> Nobody was like, man, they got to get back in Wrigley. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> dude, the people like, and and now, and, and that's the, what I mentioned earlier, we're such smarter sports fans. We really don't care as much as we would have in the past. So she's right. totally off base and just trying to gin up something to save face because she knows what the real is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into this year's team, man. A lot of changes. Uh, we have a new GM, a new head coach, new staff. Ryan Poles takes over. Matt Eberflus also takes over as head coach. Uh, let's start off, uh, Sam, what do you want to start? No, I'm just uh, kidding. <laughs> let's start there. Uh, let's start with Ryan Poles and, and, and the new, the new coach that I am nicknaming ever flush the toilet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm a Bears fan. So I, you know, he came from Detroit. I can't say that that's a franchise that I would really love to steal their coaching talent from. No, he didn't uh, come from Detroit. He didn't come from Detroit. Indiana. He didn't Apples. come from Detroit. Oh, Same Indianapolis. Movie. Same mm. thing. He coached with the he coached with the <laughs> Cowboys prior to that. I, I I don't trust anything coming out of the state of Indiana at all. You know, and, I can and, understand. And, hey, that works. That works. That works. <laughs> um, but it, Ryan Poles, for the most part, I think the the overall thought is that he's doing a good job. Uh, it seemed like he drafted well. It seems like he's instilling the culture. But I I honestly haven't heard much about uh, Eberflus. So uh, what, are, what are you hearing? What are you hearing around camp? Uh, is this a, a guy to get excited about, or is this a stopgap until we can get a decent team so we can put a decent head coach up there? No. I'm, um, my, one of my cohorts at the Under Center Podcast, Alex Shapiro. Um, make sure you follow him, Alex Shapiro, NBCS. He writes terrific articles. Um, Alex was one of the first person on the UC last what, – what, last – January, where when we started talking about head coaches, he was the first person to mention Matt Eberflus. And when he did that, and you know, I started investigating Matt Eberflus, he he popped up on my list. I was like, I'll be straight if Matt Eberflus gets the job, right? Because it's kind of I won't say it'll be exactly like this. It's a it's a lovely retread in a way, as far as discipline, dedication. Flying around like we think of, like we we I mean again, I'm not saying like the Lovey Smith era was like Oh my God! It was the greatest time ever. Yeah, right? It was I'm the greatest time that. I've been a Bears fan. I, I was about to say before, five, majority you know? of you all, it's been the greatest time you've ever been a Bears fan. Yeah, I was right, around in the right. '80s, so I I have some memories of the '80s. <laughs> and the league, right. So, but so, but so again, when you looked at it, like one, think about stuff like this, Sam. Um, guys, gang tackling, guys picking up the ball if the whistle isn't blown and hauling their ass to the end zone, even though it could be a waste of time, but just in case it's a turnover, right? It's getting back to stuff like that, where it's like, and, it, and because this defense in the, like the last several years has so many big names on it, we started to forget how great that those lovey defenses were. Excuse mm. me. Yeah. I even told, I even told Alex Brown, I was like, listen, I was being disrespectful, Right. I was on six seven Shout school one Brown. night. Yeah. Shout out to AB. And I was saying it's a chance this defense could be better than y'all's. And clearly it is not better than your. But this, <laughs> I, this, was, this, was, this was after 2018. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, after yeah, 2018, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, we was we was smoking all we the beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come back out there, Eddie Jackson, man. I mean, you ain't never, you ain't never near. 
you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> uh, again, but it's getting back to that as far as I don't believe he's a stopgap coach. I think it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be great, though, Sam. Like, I can't tell you, like, listen, don't worry about it. Even if Bruce has it, like, I'll be lying to you. Yeah. Because he still hasn't been a head coach yet. But I, I do think this. I do think it seems like he was well prepared for this promotion, and he is hella organized in what he's trying to do. So mm-hmm. I don't think it'll be because I mean there's going to be stumbles because you've never done it before, but I think he is well, well, he's more prepared than even necessary to a degree. So I don't think it'll be. I think the players from I mean we got to think the players are going to give us lip service, but everyone and this is just, they, they taking shots at the old coaching staff. It's talking about man, they really coaching us, teaching us, and showing us. So like that's all you keep hearing. Which yeah. is, I mean, but listen, we knew the last team, the last regime didn't. Like you, because you could see it on the field. Like, yeah. I, I, look, it was too much. So, getting back to again to the lovey, the the Eberflus holding people accountable. How many times did you see defensive backs pointing at each other like that Spider Man meme? Right, like <laughs> it was you. Joe Fart, no, Joe, Fart, you. Joe, Joe Fart, <laughs> Joe, yeah, like no. And again, that can happen occasionally, not twice a game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where right. it's like, so wait, we never know what we're doing out here. Like it, <laughs> again. Sometimes people can exploit you, but like this was regular, you know what I'm saying? Where it was like the secondary was getting ate up and nobody knew. Like it's like, no, you you have to know you need to know. So I I think he's a taskmaster and that there's not gonna be a lot of do what you want in this situation, especially if do what you want doesn't benefit us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's gonna be this is your responsibility. Make sure you can do it. We're going to see how far you can go and see if you can go to another level. If you can't, we'll use you this way. So I don't, I think he's not a stab go a stab gap. I think he could be good. I damn sure don't know if he could be great. Okay. I hear that. Um, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, I, I want to get to um, just while we're, before we get to the top of the hour, uh, Justin Fields, man, this is obviously his second year, but he's getting all the starter reps at camp. So where he's going into the season as the starter, there's been uh, a lot of uh, the videos that have been floating around during the first week of camp have been exciting. We see him and Darnell Mooney catching, uh, uh, hooking up, uh, commit real you know, good relationship up. brewing there apparently. Yeah. Uh, so we see a lot of we see a lot of great stuff going on, but then there's the uh, the the worrisome about the offensive line keeping him alive. So him uh, being a little bit more jittery when the the action is on behind the, behind the line of scrimmage. So what what have you been seeing, or what has your gauge been during the, this first uh, week uh, heading into uh, the pads on this week? He's missed people. He's overthrown guys. Um, we had a discussion on the Under Center podcast. Make sure you check it out. It's out right now that we recorded yesterday. It was yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. And um, I asked uh, Josh Rock, our Bears insider now, came out from Santa Clara for, for covering the Niners. Um, and Alex, I was like, listen, as far as the offense and the issues, kind of where would you put Justin? And both of them said if he, Justin would be the last problem that they think the offense has right now. So, I mean, Justin's still going through growing pains. You said it, Gabe. This is his first time in the pros getting starters reps in the pre in the, in the training camp. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, just think of it. Last year, he didn't get these reps. Right. right? Let alone, this is a new system. So, it's not even, compared to last year, what would have happened, like you look at someone like a Trey Lance, right? Trey Lance with the 49ers. You know, he necessarily didn't get those reps that, of course, it was depending on how he- how healthy Jimmy was in a training camp. But he's still no, coming. He's coming back to Cal Shanahan's system. So even though he didn't get as many reps, he knows the book. He knows the system. So there's some familiarity with it. Sure. That's not the same for Justin. And it's not just the same for Justin. It's the same. It's not the same for anyone on the offense. Yeah. Right. They're all learning something new with the defense that's simplified. It's not the same defense either, but it's a simplified defense, right? And you have better players on the defense than you have on the offense, period, still, right? Like, the secondary yeah. should be good, actually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if Nick Morrow is healthy, him and Roquan should be good uh, linebackers. The question is what with your four down linemen. But if you still have Robert Quinn healthy, you st- and he have, performs close to last year, you have a stud. Who's your stud offensive lineman? You don't have one. Regardless of how you feel about someone like Cody Whitehair or whatever, he's not a stud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, all you keep hearing about <coughs> – sorry, <coughs> I apologize. 
Mm-hmm. All you keep hearing about is the pressure. They're getting pressure with Al Kuhim Muhammad, who was a, a, a bit a bit time player with the Colts. They're getting play. Look, I love Travis Gibson. I've been saying he at least give me a Mark Anderson year out of Travis. They're getting pressure with Muhammad and Gibson and Justin Jones. We had our first Justin Jones side in this 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 the, the, like this game of uh, this preseason. I mean, this just training camp game today. Where so you're telling me they're not just pressuring him from the outside. Now they're getting pressure up the middle. Like, and I mean, the whole thing what they're trying to give us is they're going to move him around. You can only move somebody around so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to win from the pocket to really get it done in the NFL at one point. And even in moving around, around, there's a risk of them getting hurt. But I don't think, again, it's a fear of Justin. It's, it's you got Luke Getzey. I'm not saying that he's failing. Um, he's a first time play caller in the NFL. So he's getting his feet up under him. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think for the most part, um, Sam, this kind of gets back to your question about Eberflus. I think the thing that I thought with Matt Eberflus is this defense should be humming a lot earlier than the offense, and that's what you would expect with a defensive coach who seems to be such a, a taskmaster as Eberflus. But I, and then the offense will come around. So I, I, I perhaps, and I said this on the rush today, by the end of qu- the first quarter, you may start seeing the offense starting to click a little bit. But what else, they should still they could still win a game or two because you're supposed to be able to one defensively stop teams, but also Justin's an athlete. You know, you get in the red zone, you have to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? So like it, this isn't I'm not by any means going to make an excuse for the offense and be like, man, this offense is going to suck. They're just not going to win games. They this is a this is a professional roster. You should be able to squeak out some points. It's, it's not like you've been averaging 20 points the last three seasons anyway. I mean, just yeah, think about yeah. that. Yeah. So you should be able, you should be able to put up a, f- a couple touchdowns and a couple field goals. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you should be able to pull that off and e- e- eke out a game or two before perhaps the offense starts to really get lathered up. Yeah. I uh, I mean, can can he stay healthy? I mean, like given this offensive line, our over under on four games for Justin Fields. Over, over, over. Unless, some, unless it's a freak incident, I think it's over. I mean, I mean, last year a lot of the stuff that happened with Justin is Justin is Justin's kind of he's an athlete that kind of doesn't know better. Mm, um, uh, he he and he 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 is terrible at getting down. And I said this last year that he scares the hell out of me because his slide and stuff it's like Yo, he it's bounces bad. back up sometimes he bounces back up before the play is really over and it's like no no no. you gotta let the the whistle blow take a second you know what i'm saying but don't slide pop you know what i'm saying because like some of it has to do with him with what he his some, some like his justin wants to win from the pocket so he hesitates and this that was some of the issue last year was like dude that was an open lane you gotta go i i know you want to prove who you are but you still have these attributes that you have to take advantage of. Yeah. So I don't think he. I don't. And again, I, I can't read. I'm not. I don't have a crystal ball here. He can get hurt. I don't think Justin. I think it's an over for four games. Um, but I'm, let's be honest. This offensive line is bad. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it is. Um, the Tevin Jenkins stuff is is frustrating. You know what I'm saying? That's you know, when you're talking about Ryan Poles. Um, I've been easy on Ryan Poles. But the Tevin Jenkins things has me a little bit like, nah, y'all, you guys, this is too early for this, especially if you're talking about he's one of the most talented linemen we have, but he's in a, sit his ass the hell down. What's he gonna do? He can't go anywhere. What's he <laughs> right. like? What's he's he's not gonna get paid? Like, is he gonna be insubordinate? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what options, what options does he have? He either falls in line or you don't get your bread, kid. So again, it may take him a, a, a minute as a youngster to figure that out. But we all know when it's like, yo, you this can be your ass, that you either gonna fall in line and do what we say, or it's gonna hurt you because it can't harm us. He's a he's a second year player who barely played. He's not gonna ruin the offensive line. Who's following him? You know, so like Braxton, <laughs> Braxton, Braxton Jones Jr., who's trying to win a get a job ahead of him, isn't gonna be like Tevin doesn't like the front office. I'm not gonna like like no, he's like 
F Tevin. I want his job and his opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if he's going to mess it up, I'm going to take advantage. No one's following him. So having him around to me, the argument of like, man, he could say sour who like, for instance, like a Robert Quinn being like, man, I can't stand in front of him. Yeah, that could cause some problems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially with young defenders following him. That could, some some second year player who played like two games last year was injured for the majority of the year who your bosses don't like. You already know to tune him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I ain't going to let you take me down with you. Like, so, no, figure out, get this kid on track to find out what you have this season and next year. You know what I'm saying? You have him for, including the season, three years, right? If he can be decent, find out if he can be decent. Because you're not going to get a draft pick that's viable enough to where it matters. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you, it's not. So, like, that to me – is a Ryan Poles thing where it's like, I understand you didn't draft him, but still there's too much equity with a kid that worst case scenario could be a decent right tackle and you, your line's trash. You know what I'm saying? Like if we, now if we had like the, the nineties Cowboys the offensive voice. line, right. We had yeah, Larry Allen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nate Newton, you know what I'm saying? Like I can understand Eric Wood. I can understand be like, yo kid, get your ass out of here. Right. Like you, you don't have that. So, like, that to me is where it's kind of frustrating where it's like, nah, y'all. Y'all figure this out. Like, I had somebody on the rush today who was like, cut him. Are you nuts? I don't care about it. <laughs> a second-round offensive lineman with a, I got a tawdry line. I'm going to cut him? Are you like, no, like, come on now. Stop overreacting. Figure it out. The kid can't go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be different if he was going to be a free agent next year, right? Be like, well, let's get something before you. He's not going anywhere. Sit his ass down and teach him that this is the big boys league and you're going to have to do what we say or you're going to be upset and we're going to be finding the hell out of your ass. Or let me say, finding the fuck out of your ass. <laughs> yep. Take his bread. He'll, he'll act I accordingly. Uh, all right. Before we let you go here, Ken, uh, your fantasy tips last time you came on the show did not save me from my waffle punishment. Uh, didn't save so me either, man. Didn't save me <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear it. So, as so long as we're passing on bad fantasy tips, I need three things from you, my friend. I need one player to avoid this fantasy season. Ooh, that's a uh, man. You, why did you send me this before I came? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what player? Um, you know what? I'm gonna say I would the player that jumps out to me the most, who I've had in fantasy, and it, it bit my my tail. I would stay away from Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. Okay. Because Ooh. I don't know. Because he's not going to get the same amount of catches. Because one, Drew Brees didn't have an arm. So he was giving him all the underneath stuff he can get his hands on. Yeah. He's not going to get that from James Winston. And he, you have Chris Olave on the other side. So, and he's been injury prone on top of that. And a malcontent. So yeah. I would say just in case. <laughs> because he's going to be thinking about it. If you, he's going to be ranked high. The He's computer's gonna be playing not going to really think. Yeah. Right, the computer's <laughs> not. The computer's not going to think about how he's been and his injuries. They're going to have him at like a back back into the second round, maybe, guys. So I would probably say I would be leery of Michael Thomas. Just it jumps out to me because you just sprung this on me right now. Okay, word. Uh, one more sleeper. Um. I you would can, say you can go hometown if you need to. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> you, know what, no, no, no. you know what? Let me say. Let me. Say, I don't know how much running back by committee the Bears are going to do. Right. But David Montgomery isn't going to be yanked around like he was in the past. Mm -hmm. But the only problem would be I don't know how. Like I don't know because I've never seen his coaching staff and Luke Getzey call plays on. Where do you get to where okay, this is this running back series? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know his rhythm to where it's like, damn, you had six runs, but I have Khalil Herbert here and he has fresh legs. Let me put him in, and you may be in the red zone. It's like, let me get my touch. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that I was I would say that, but I will tell you this, and I will have to look at it. It's probably gonna be one of the rookie wide receivers. Cause it's all it seems it's always one, you know what I'm saying? Like I will have to go and and look, but it's all it's it's always a rookie wide receiver necessarily that jumps out to me where I would say look at or I'll say this I'll give you a dark horse. This is gonna be crazy. I would maybe say Trey Lance. 
Okay. And that would be, but the, I'll say this: I wouldn't necessarily say as my starter. And I don't know. I don't. I, no, think, I know like, yours is crazy. Yours is. I think that the last time we talked, like y'all league is newfangled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we change that shit every year. I don't even. Right, our, but I, our CBA is this weekend. We gotta figure okay. out what's going on. Yeah, but he's. I think it's going to be a situation. Um, I can't even remember. Like a year or two ago. There was a quarterback that was getting so many scramble yards. I can't even remember which quarterback it was, but I remember like like that. Like I think he's gonna get a Terrell lot Bryan? of goal line. <laughs> Bryan, yo, but uh, talk, about, talk about digging no. up a name. <laughs> no, no, not 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 tattoo, not tattoo prior. Um, I would think it's good. I would, I, but I do think he's gonna sneak up on some guys with just using his legs. And also just Cal Shannon. Cal Shannon is one of the best offensive play calls, the smartest offensive of mine. So again, I, I'm I'm not I'm not even locked into fantasy. No, I haven't looked at it. The only time I thought about it is when I was in the pre-show and I was like, oh, Sam's gonna ask me something about fantasy. <laughs> I haven't thought about any fantasy stuff. So don't you don't use me. I am not the fantasy <laughs> expert. The, these everything here should be taken Cle- off the ground. Clearly, I went down with your advice last exactly. year. Exactly. <laughs> so look, look, check out Sam. Don't listen to anything just, he has to say. I'm gonna just do the about. opposite of what. Ken, do do Ken the, has exa- on the take Michael Thomas. Definitely go get Michael Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Before we get to, I have one last real quick question for you, Ken. On the Bears roster, what new phase should we keep an eye on? I know we got like a bunch of uh, people who are draft picks or people we traded for. Like, uh, was it Nikhil Harry for that we got from the Pats? No, he's uh, trash. He was on my fantasy team. Last Byron, year. He Byron, Byron you Pringle. You had Nikhil Harry on your fantasy team? You can't put that on me. You can't put, <laughs> you're doing that. I have no, it got, to do it with got dire. Failure. It got dire. You know, man. It got it, it got, got late. Very dire. <laughs> Whoa, that has nothing. To, first, that has nothing to do with you. Know, it. You know when you're at the casino and you're like, "Fuck it, put the whole house on number two and it's roulette." You know, I knew that he was trash, but I also knew that like trash players could have one good week, and I was trying to farm one good week across the board. Uh, so yeah, I'm familiar with N. Keel. And what month uh, was no. this? What month was this? <laughs> Oh, this is mid-season. I think this might have been like week seven or eight. He, he did not stay on my team all year. I, I did not draft asshole. This, asshole. this man. I mean, we're talking to, we're talking about Mac Jones who threw two passes in Buffalo. So I'm just saying, at that point, I don't know if I want to receive it from that team necessarily to be on my fantasy team. I'm just want to somebody got to catch balls. That was somebody, my, that but was not my Nikhil Harry. You know it's a blocker. <laughs> Great blocker. So, Great blocker. So, so he is not a fresh face we should be looking for. But so what what fresh face on the Bears team this year do you think that we should keep an eye and ear out for? Dude, let's the, the, the damn safety and quarterback, uh, Brisker and Gordon won. I mean, look, w- one of them has to pop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think, no, I think both of them could. But, I mean, like, that was, look, coming away with the, the, the collateral that they got at that point in the draft, that value was high. On because that secondary was it was down low with the offensive line and the receivers room, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could actually sure. say it was worse in a way, it could have been slightly worse than the receipt because you only person you could count on was Jalen. They felt you could count on was Jalen Johnson because if you were saying you could count on Eddie, you okay, I don't trust you either, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> that's the I'm only like, you had diminishing return. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I mean, he was giving you diminishing returns and yeah. you keep lining yourself. Like it was clear, like no, when you when when we're on local radio and hosts are asking, like, "Yo, is he still in money to guess?" That's a different level, you know what I'm saying? Because people really don't talk like that. When people are talking, like, "Yo, do you think when he got his contract, he stopped really?" Like, you don't really hear that on the radio. Like, there may be something that us we're talking about in the back room or something. You don't yeah. hear people that are professionals. Some people, you know, what I'm saying, like, say things like that. So that so I would say that I would say definitely them. Uh, maybe Byron Pringle. I always thought Byron Pringle was going to follow Ryan Poles. You know what I'm saying? Like it just made sense. And being someone who loves Patrick Mahomes, shout out, baby go. Um, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I Byron Pringle has stood out to me just because he was the third or fourth receiver on Kansas City's roster. So I thought he would follow Poles, and I thought he would end up here. Uh, he may have a decent season. Um, I think that maybe you know what? Maybe uh, uh, Trenton Tristan Ebner. Um, as far as special teams, I do think he'll be involved in offense and pass plays out of the backfield too, or maybe they'll perhaps 
so he'll start in the backfield and end up perhaps out out wider at the slot or something like that. But I think Tristan Ebner, I mean, I think anyone can say Bayless Jones. I have to see it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the offense has to be clicking, even sure. though you could come up with a lot of trick plays. So um, I would definitely say, I mean, you asked initially the phase. I think defensively, if they can get pressure up front, I think we're going to end up kind of low-key loving this defense earlier than we expect. Like low, hey. like if they can listen. If Justin Jones can get pressure one at three technique, right? If you first of all, if you if he can really do that, and then Robert Quinn is good, I think we're gonna low key be like, yo, this defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. I think they're gonna get more turnovers than they've had the last couple of years. I believe this season. You know what I'm saying? And that that's that's more uh, that's more opportunities for the offense. We want to exactly. see. It. We want to see. They can shorten the field and, uh, you know, Justin could do something with his legs and at least get some of those field goals you're talking about and maybe a touchdown or two. We'll be all yeah. right. But, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Ken, thank you so much for joining us. Follow Ken at That's Davis on the social medias and also listen to and subscribe to Under the Center Podcast on NBC Sports, man. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Hopefully we'll have we'll try to grab you somewhere in the middle of the, the year. Oh, quick prediction. Really quick. When do you got the Bears going this year? Um, six or seven wins. If they get to eight, it wouldn't shock sure. me. Um, the only only fear would be that they could get more wins and it could be smoke and mirrors and they could think it's realer than what it is. But I don't think unless they fail in the next few years, I don't think this front office is that stupid. But like if you're sucking, you're gonna go back and be like, man, 2022, we was doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> So, like, but I, I I think, like, the same amount of wins as last year, if not a game or two, should be in the realm. I mean, me personally, I want them to get a top 10 pick like that. And then I don't want you to be here again. You know what I'm saying? So if it's – especially think about this. There's hella quarterbacks coming out this year. If you – when we opened up talking about Steven Ross in hang Miami. On. Hang on. What? what? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. That, that, like, that'll be messed up. Like, we get to the end of the year – and we're like, man, Shroud and Young, man, y'all look better than Justin. No, I'm saying from the point, this is what I'm saying. You're in a position now to where you can recoup future draft picks because you feel like you have a quarterback. And yeah. compared to like this year, like think about it. No one was drafting up to get Kenny Pickett or Malik <laughs> Willis, right? Yeah. Like you, so you had a situation where no one was moving like that in the draft because – that that one thing you can lie to yourself about a quarterback like this can change all our fortunes. It wasn't there. It wasn't one believable for you to lie to yourself. You're talking about Shroud. You're talking about Young. You're talking like there, there's so many quarterbacks coming out that are first. Like there's at least four perhaps in this upcoming first round that if the Bears have a top ten pick, they can trade out and get other first round picks. And that's what you want to start. Like that's what Miami and what Philadelphia have have done to where. They've allowed themselves now to where if Jalen Hurts isn't the man, yo, we can go out and get another quarterback because we got multiple first round picks. We can draft up. We can draft. That's what Miami was doing with Tua. That's why they put so much around Tua to find out if Tua is that guy. If not, you're out. We can go get that guy. So I'm yeah. saying the Bears can set themselves up now to where they can go and get whoever they want in future drafts if they're able to move down in this upcoming draft because it's quarterback heavy and they already hopefully have their quarterback in the future. Word, man. Word. All right, uh, really quick, what's your early Super Bowl prediction? Who do you got? That's a good one. Um, I'm going to say, we'll see. From, I'm going to go with from the NFC. The Rams repeat? If hell, no, no. Nah, never, hell no. Never that. No, <laughs> I, don't trust, I don't trust Sean McVay. Like, what happened in that Tampa Bay game made sure that me and Sean McVay should never be in the same room. <laughs> Right, like he just he was like, Here, goat, do you want to have it? And it was like, What do you kill him? You don't yeah. allow Jason Voorhees <laughs> to just keep it. You drop him in a bottomless pit, you drop a building on you, keep blowing up, the pit. <laughs> like you don't, you you do it, you do it annually. Like it's one of those things that he's dead. I'm like, So, no, nah, he's not. You keep doing it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say, Uh, I'm gonna look at Tampa, yeah. Um, I'm gonna look at Tampa, I'm gonna look at if. If this was another year and perhaps health, I would look at the 49ers because I think the problem with the 49ers is health to me. I don't know yeah. what's in the water. I don't know what's on the turf. I don't know what's up with the trainers. I don't trust them health-wise 
uh, when it comes to the 49ers. So I'm, I'm going to go to Tampa because I don't think it's Green Bay. Even though one thing about Green Bay, it could help them not having that bell cow receiver to where the ball is spread out more because they still got one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And the Green Bay's defense is better than what it was last year. They yeah. they put a lot of that draft equity in this past draft in their defense. So it could be Green Bay, but like Aaron Rodgers has came up short in the playoffs the last couple of seasons at least. So it, it yeah. hurts me from saying that. But I'm, it's going to be one of these older quarterbacks, in my opinion, that I will have to kind of lean on when it comes to Aaron Rodgers or Tom, Tom Brady. And I'll probably go – Depending on what Tampa does, and Tampa do anything to keep Tom happy, maybe with Tampa because it was they was they was close last year. How Sean McVay wanted to give him back that game, and in the, in the AFC, man, dude, just pick a team. You know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> who could I mean if any team? Look, pick any team in the AFC West. Even though you could say they'll end up beating themselves, um, I'm gonna go with. First, my heart is always with Patrick Mahomes. Um, but maybe I, I, I know everyone's high, everyone's high on Herbert. I'm not saying they shouldn't be. I just need to see him do it in playoff games. No, no, no. Yep. Or it's going to be, it's what it's going to be is Chargers, and these are all on the same level. I'm no, no I'm going to go with Buffalo, the Chargers, and then uh, Kansas City in that order. Okay. Okay. I, I, I well, say... I'm holding out for that Buffalo Buccaneers Super Bowl. Uh, we'll see if it happens. Uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> say that I'm believing in Buffalo, ever, but uh, we'll see. All right, we, we need another Griselda Buffalo uh, rap song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we definitely need that should they win. All right, Ken, let's really get you out th- this time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, stopping by, and uh, hanging out with us a little bit over time. We appreciate it. Sam and Gabe, appreciate that you all be safe, and I'm here right, anytime we- you need me. We got Gabe's it's plays amazing. coming up, so if you want to linger around for a bit and watch this fuckery, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I watch a little bit. Yep, yeah, I watch a little bit. Put me in the back. All right, sounds good. All right, Ken. All right, Ken Davis joining us here on Weekend at Games for an extensive conversation about the NFL. And I, I, I nerd out about a lot of things. We did the whole nerd out with Star Wars with Tim Barnes and nerding out with the Bears with Ken Davis is always a pleasure. So we hope to get him back sort of you know, mid to late season, and we can we can review all the fuckery that's gone on with the Chicago Bears. Thank you for watching the latest episode of Weekend at Games on YouTube, brought to you by the Ghetto Flower. Make sure to also click on the links in the description for more information to our guests and access to exclusive new music from the Ghetto Flower and so much more. Make sure to also like and subscribe to the show and also continue to share support and show love by clicking on any of the links surrounding my head. Thanks for watching.